Hello, everybody, and welcome to Sales Operations Demystified again. And sorry, well, that's your... And for the first time ever, we're joined by a remote guest. Kelsey, how are you? Doing good. How are you doing? Really, really great. And here's a whole new experience because, Kelsey, I don't know if you've seen some of the other or heard some of the others. It's been myself, Henry, and someone sat here next to us. Um, but we actually realized that, yes, we can get great guests doing that, but actually there's probably a lot of other great sales operations people in the world that we're not able to bring to London. Um, so I'm really happy that you're here. A um, couple of pieces of admin before we do kick off. Um, we have now gone live on iTunes. So if you Google sales operations demystified or just even sales operations for iTunes, you should see the podcast feed with the five episodes that we've done so far. And um, so that actually went live today. So I'm super excited about that. Um, Henry sends his apologies. He had to go to an event, didn't he, Josh? Uh, so Henry went to an event. He's actually the sales manager of Ebster, so he can't just, he has a real job. He can't just sit on webinars and podcasts every day. Um, so we're here. Um, so, Kelsey, first of all, I want to thank you so much for coming on um, at such short notice. Um, and I'm super excited because we're going to see, I, I've obviously been through your LinkedIn profile, um, and we've had some people on who have had like seven years selling and then shifted over to sales operations. Um, but you've taken a slightly different journey, and I'm sure we're going to get into that um, over yeah. this talk. So what I'd like to start off with, uh, for everyone listening, we, we, we have kind of a, a a set of questions we like to move through. Uh, so we'll be moving through those, but obviously anything super interesting, uh, we'll dive in and can talk more about. Um, so first off, I'd just like to start off with kind of understanding more about Workfront and then your journey uh, before you joined Workfront as well. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So Workfront, um, we sell uh, what's called an operational system of record, and that's kind of our uh, goal is to make that um, Something that every company, every company needs to know what's going on um, at their company. We sell to enterprise uh, companies. Mm -hmm. It's like just an overview of what uh, Workfront sells. Um, and uh, my journey before I started at Workfront. Um, so sales ops was something that I really got lucky and stumbled into a little bit more. Mm -hmm. so I had a particular journey there. Um, so in college, I was very focused on. Um, doing something medical, I guess, anything up until our last semester when I decided I wanted to go into that direction. Um, and all I knew was I wanted to do something with data analytics and also for, work for a tech company. Um, so I kind of just hired for a bunch of different companies. Uh, when I got hired at Workfront, um, I actually got hired into the CX operations role. Ah. Um, so we started in that and my uh, EVP of my department got fired a week into uh, me working there and the mm -hmm. consolidated CX and sales cells for a brief minute. And I got put under sales operations um, and uh, mentioned to my boss that I really liked using Salesforce um, and felt pretty comfortable using it. And so he kind of did this little test to see my aptitude for, for Salesforce mm -hmm. uh, and then sent me to training to be a Salesforce admin. So about five years ago, uh, my journey in sales operations started with me being a Salesforce admin. Um, mm -hmm. And since then, I've uh, steadily picked up knowledge in sales operations industry. Uh, uh, and um, every year, you know, kind of focused on certain areas of what that I wanted to learn. Um, once I got really competent at that, I moved on to the next thing. Um, yeah. And now that's the level that I'm at, I kind of try to incorporate conferences as well as networking. Um, with other sales ops experts, so I can kind of figure out what the best in class sales operations professionals are. Doing. Nice. Um, that's super interesting, right? So you actually came in customer service. Ops. Yep. And because we've had a couple of people on the podcast who've actually said that in reality, there should be just one operations department for marketing and customer service and sales, right? And so it's interesting that when you're with your boss at five, that they actually combined for a short period of time, sales and customer success. Is that right? Okay, cool. Yeah. And now are they separate teams? Yeah. So about like a year or two after I became went into sales ops, the CX ops, they split it again and it's been mm. separated ever since, which I think makes a lot more sense for our company as yeah. a whole to have that distinction. And what why why for your company? So what was that? Why for your company? Does, does that make sense? 
Um, I just think there's such different roles. I mean, CX and sales, uh, I mean, they're both working with our customers, mm. um, but uh, CX operations does a lot more, I guess, um, involved with like the consultants, mm -hmm. CSMs, um, and uh, their data that they're looking at is a little bit different what, than what we're looking at yeah. as far as cell operation goes. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I think that it's just, we have different priorities. I mean, we both have the priority of maintaining our, I mean, keeping our customer database and keeping them happy. But mm. yeah. do, the, um, do the customer service team have, uh, are they responsible for re renewals and upsells or is that the sales team? The sales team is responsible for that. Cool. So we do everything renewals, upsells. That makes sense because actually here at Evdiv kind of almost tweaked in the customer service team have renewal and upsell targets. And I think it's quite interesting whether you place that on a customer success or customer success or sales, because actually then customer success kind of becomes sales team almost, right? You know what I mean? It's quite interesting. So that does make sense that it would be good to have a operations for the revenue generating department, which in your case is just sales, right? Cool, got it. Um, yeah. Okay, and so you, it almost by accident then, right? Where you got into sales. <laughs> Yes, kind of stumbled into it and figured out this is exactly what I love. So I got really lucky. Uh -huh. um, but, but you did say before that you were looking to work in like something to do with data analytics. Um, yes. Which I think leads quite nicely into the next question, which is about what you think makes an awesome sales operations person. Yeah. Um, so at mm -hmm. Workfront, um, our sales operations kind of commander's intent is what we call it, um, is to enable sales to hit their number um, by providing the tools, data, and support necessary. Nice. Um, and so uh, we consider sales our customer. Interesting, interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah. So if that, could, could, could you just say that one line again? I thought that was really good about how, how you define what sales are done. Oh, it's uh, to enable sales to hit their number by providing the tools, data, and support necessary. Nice. We we haven't had anyone come on and give such a concise description before. Um, and the thing we said after that, yeah, so sales organization being your customer. Other people have said, oh, we've had a discussion about this actually, about how other people have said that actually the their sales operations brought by the head of sales or the VP of growth is their boss. But actually, no, what you're really saying is that you're there to enable your yep. customer, right? That's quite an interesting approach. Um, and, and so to, to the question then, someone who is in sales operations, what like the key skill or like the one most important skill that you think makes a really good person, sales ops person? So um, along with what I was kind of was saying with our, our commander's intent, um, I think, I don't know if I necessarily have like one, I have a couple of things, um, but I believe, I think we want somebody who believes they are on the same team as mm. the sales rep and want to help them to succeed and have the skills to help them do that. Yeah. Um, and then obviously like more of those skills, what are those skills that we're looking for? It's somebody who's strategic, mm. is able to have a bigger picture and is a questioner. Um, Cause I think sometimes in sales operations, you can get stuck doing the same thing or in sales, I should say, um, so we should be asking, like, why are we doing these things mm. and how can we do what we're doing? Um, so that can be extremely helpful to have. Yeah. So I, I, I really like the first part, but I'm not sure how you would like screen for that in an interview. The first part with how you need someone who wants to serve the sales team. Right. And so I guess in an interview, let's say you're hiring for a new sales ops person, you could just ask them if they want to serve the sales team. That's probably not very effective there. But then, like, do, do you have any questions you'd ask in the interview or any way you can tell if someone is like that? I guess um, the questions that I would ask in an interview are, you know, how did you help the sales, sales organization? Like, what have you done? I mean, I'm hiring a data analyst right now, and that's one of the big questions is, what did you, what have you done? Can you give me a specific example of how you have helped the sales organization? specifically um, just so you can see like you know if that's their number one thing that should be something that you know they should be able to speak to yeah they should have a really good example like straight away yeah mm -hmm. yeah exactly okay nice um cool i think that is really important actually um i think henry would also agree that you're there to 
like each salesperson has their number and you and as I said the sales operations team has to be able to somehow increase the likelihood that they're going to hit that number right um yeah. and then there's that the, the reason a business would invest in a sales operations team is that the sales team would then be more likely to hit that number um, yeah absolutely. so that totally makes sense um next question and it, i think it's going to be quite interesting because of your background um do you think that having sales experience is actually uh, a, a prerequisite or necessary to being effective in sales operations so uh, coming from someone with no sales experience, I would say the answer is no. Mm, yeah. Uh, that I've been able to succeed in sales operations. Um, what I do think is necessary uh, is the ability to empathize with the sales position uh, because it is a really hard role and mm. they have a lot to deal with. So um, my, me personally, I try to stay very open-minded mm. um, and really actually listen to their concerns so I can best help and serve them and make their lives a lot easier. Um, so at Workfront, we try to have, you know, lunch and learns where people tell us what they wish we would change. Um, and we also try to get uh, the opinion of sales reps or sales managers whenever we roll things out, just to make sure that it's actually going to benefit them. And, and help them. So, yeah, you, so to emphasize, for me, that means to really understand these people and understand yep. what motivates them, what they like and dislike, and how they work. And I guess that yep, absolutely. it's almost like a parallel there, like as a, um, a business or even like a marketer, so I have a marketing background. For me to be able to serve our audience, I have to really understand them, right? Yeah, absolutely. So the parallel there is obviously that the salespeople are essentially your customers. Yep. And so the more you understand them, the more effective you can be in sales operations. Great. How are we doing, Josh? Any questions on, on any problems? Okay, is this going to be, oh, that's actually quite relevant to the next question. So, yeah, I, I'll bring that in after this question. So, uh, next question is about tech stack and technology. So, what front, what are we currently, what are we currently utilizing? Um, so, our tech stack, we have Salesforce or CRM, uh, DataFox we use for account scoring, yeah. um, which is huge, obviously. Uh, Discover Org we use to make sure our data is super clean okay um, what does that well sorry I, I haven't heard of that tool before um what does that do discover org uh, we use so i mean what we use it for it might not be exactly what it's used for i guess mm. uh it gives you org charts for every single not every single company but a lot of the companies um but it also what we use it for a lot of is like the employee count um, we find that it gets a very active employee count. And so that's what we use to make sure our data is clean in Salesforce. Got it. So it'll give you, it can give you org charts and employee numbers of accounts that you have in Salesforce. That's pretty and good. And also our sales reps use it uh, to find, like if it gives you the org chart, then you can know who you need to speak to at the company. Yeah, how do they, do you know how they do that is by scraping LinkedIn? Nice. Sorry, what was that? Do you know how they get that data? So they use, the, I mean, we use a couple of things. We use the Discover org mm. um, with the org chart. They can actually import that into Salesforce or they use LinkedIn um, okay. and, and reach out to them through LinkedIn. Nice. That's what also like. um, anything else? Um, as far as tech stack goes, yeah. is that what you're asking? Yeah. So yeah, we, have, we, have, we use outreach for prospecting, mm -hmm. um, Tableau for all of our reporting, yeah. um, and Insight Squared also for reporting as well both of those um and uh i i think those are primarily i mean we have a couple others but those are the ones that we primarily use and we have like own backup to make sure that you know if anything crashes then we mm -hmm. have something to get ready to get the, the data sure um okay cool and the question in so this is from someone on facebook right josh um once you are bringing in a new tool like you just listed out a load of tools then once you're bringing in a new one, is there an effective way you use to train people on a new tool? Would you just give them the tool and let them do their thing? Or would you kind of, yeah, I think you mentioned lunch and learns, right? Would you like, how do you go about bringing new tools to the team that you're starting? So uh, we kind of try to make sure there's a lot of uh, FaceTime around the new tool, mm -hmm. I guess, in a sense. Um, 
so we work a lot with our sales enablement team. Enablement does a lot more of the training on the tools, and we just make sure that we kind of let them know, you know, the differences of the, of the tools. Um, and so when we did when we when we do roll out new tools, we have uh, team meetings mm. around them, um, very specific, like one on like not one on one, but like shorter, not shorter. Smaller groups, yeah. that's the word I'm looking yeah. for, um, to just kind of like go over the tool, express the benefits, um, and make sure it's like as easy to use as possible. We've kind of dissected it to make sure that it's it's easy to use yeah. um, and, and sales reps can see the benefit of it. And so, um, and then we kind of do follow-up meetings. Um, our sales enablement team is really, really good. Um, they have a lot of trainings on site online. Yeah, um, yeah I, I was going to say about that. So... How many people are there in the sales enablement team? Um, I believe there's like six, between six and eight. I can't really remember. Cool. And, and then the amount of people in your team? There are uh, 11 of us in sales operations. Nice. And then how many salespeople approximately? Um, about uh, 180. Great. That's really cool. Uh, I don't think we've had anyone on with the sales team of that magnitude before. Fantastic. Uh, quick question from Dave on the chat um, about the lunch and learns. What are you, if that for information transfer from the sales team to you guys, but also from you guys to the sales team, like what do you, what do you discuss on those, on those events? On the lunch and learn? Yeah. Um, so I guess my lunch and learn, it's not this, it's more for us to learn uh, what it is. So, I mean, we have sales reps coming from different companies who've used either Salesforce or other things in the company. Yeah. And so we want to make sure that they're telling us, hey, like we use this at a different company and we really like how we did things at a different company or this is something that's really, really hard for us and we have actually like figuring this out. So I guess more the learning is on our side to figure out what their pains are, what they're having issues with. And then we use um, our software uh, work front to kind of prioritize and, yeah. and kind of Fill out everything. Uh -huh. um, uh, sign out onto my team. Who's going to be working on what? Mm -hmm. and then all hands uh, meetings we have every six weeks. We have a sales operations time spot or whatever yeah. that we can go over the changes that we've made. Sure. And, and let everybody know what we've done there. Shout out to Workfront for facilitating that process. <laughs> um, okay. Favorite tech tool of all time related to sales ops? Uh, definitely Salesforce. Okay. Um, not live without it, and I would not work for a company that did not. Really? Yes. That would be like a significant part of the, if you were to ever go to a different company, that would be a significant part of the process. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I, because I think like, I think Salesforce is an extremely powerful tool. Mm -hmm. And when it's configured correctly, there's like an immense amount of value that can be brought to the yeah. organization. Have you have you been to Dreamforce? Yes, I have. Did you have a great time? I have had great times. Um, it's gotten yeah. a little big. I'm not going to the massive crowds, but it's a very great conference. I think they do a really good job. Oh, it's amazing. I, I think the whole like from a marketing and branding standpoint, it's just amazing what they've done. I like them so admirable. Um, Okay, Josh, how are we doing with questions? Cool, next. Um, okay, interesting. Data quality, how we deal with it. And also, this is interesting for you because actually you have this role previously, the work front, which is how does your role in sales operations overlap with a CRM owner or the data quality role in the business? Um, so, Broke up a little bit, so I think I'm just going to kind of answer what I think you're asking. Yeah. Like how do you deal with the quality? Um, so I'm going to answer that in two ways. One for the consulting company that I do for Oplify, because I think that's kind of um, for everybody, and then what we also have done at Workfront specifically. Yeah. Um, so with Oplify, I've had the opportunity to help companies kind of clean up their CRM data, um, and I think a huge part of that is instilling best practices to ensure that duplicates stop coming in in the first place, mm -hmm. and then have instilling like the right tools to enrich what you already have in in Salesforce or in whatever CRM you're using. Cool. Database. Um, and at Workfront, we undertook actually a massive data project. Um, started by making sure we had processes set in place uh, for duplicates to kind of block those from being created. And then we make our sales reps actually submit requests to change 
uh, like employee account address, account name, things like that. Uh, we we can submit that to sales operations. So sales operations has the final say on uh, what the data says. Sure. Make the final call. Sure. I, and so, so what? I know, I can continue, sorry. So after we did that, uh, we identified what our target segment was. And we had a huge data, data uh, clean um, for that target, our target segment. Um, a lot of time, but the results have been really just staggering. Um, because I think once you have a clean database, it really helps your sales organization be more effective mm -hmm. because there's no confusion on what am I supposed to be working? Um, why don't I have any accounts to work? Whatever. So we really, really make sure we put a lot of emphasis in that. Yeah. And we have, our target segment is really, really clean. Yeah. So, so one thing is first, have best practices for putting data into your CRM or Salesforce to reduce likelihood of duplicates. And then once yeah. you, after that, make sure you have tools and press in place to maintain yep. quality. Um, what are the tools that you guys use to, to maintain that? So we, um, we use a, a combination. So we kind of came up with what we felt was the best uh, or the, the best tools to determine what, what the data should say. Yeah. So that's what we use for like Discover Org for, as well as the combination Discover Org, Datafox, LinkedIn of like figuring out what of these is the best. Um, and then we also have a tool called Cloud Dingo um, and that kind of uh, will pull up duplicates and, and, and sync those sure. um, according to the filters that you put in there. Um, but I think like to enrich the data a lot with Discover Org or Datafox. Yeah, I mean, that, we're gonna have to do a quick shout out or we're gonna have to link to, uh, what was the name of Discover? Discover or yeah, discover and data. data folks. They sound really good. Um, mm -hmm. Cool. Okay, that sounds good. Um, let's move on to the next question. Oh, actually, we have one from James Clanack on the chat. Um, in my experience, sales operations is different in many companies. What is your definition? Well, we've actually already been through that, um, which was your awesome, concise sentence. Um, could you just repeat that one more time, Kelsey? Because I really like that. Yeah. So our commander's intent is. Um, our goal as a sales operations team is to enable sales to hit their number by providing the tools, data, and support necessary to be successful. We should we should be we're going to tweet that out later. Um, what is your definition? Uh, inc do they include contracts and deal desks? It's no stuff no one wants to know. And I'm not sure what that last part means. Um, does that make sense to you, Kathy? When I when I ask you if your definition of sales ops includes contracts and deal desks? Um, yeah, I guess, uh, I don't think that's necessary because we don't include that, I guess, at Workfront. Deal Desk is an entirely separate. Um, okay, cool. So, so kind of, so at, at Workfront anyway, Deal Desk and contracts wouldn't sit within sales operations. No, but we work very, very closely and have weekly meetings with them. Got it. Okay, cool. What do you think is the biggest challenge in your role? Um, so I think the biggest challenge in my role is balancing everything that sales operations is supposed to be doing. Mm. Uh, I think that sales operation wears a lot of hats and we're always getting pulled in a million directions mm. what people's priorities are. Um, and so that's a lot of what I do as a consultant is to help companies come up with their sales operations practices so they know what their priorities are. Um, in fact, uh, my partner and I at Offlified, the company that I started, um, actually came up with a sales operations playbook that details about what we believe the priorities of every single sales operations team should be. Mm -hmm. I've used that playbook at Workaround to help identify what our goals are um, every year. And uh, it's helped me make the business decision to segment my team in a specific way because we're getting the most work done. Nice. Is, is that playbook really available online? The sales operations playbook? Yeah. Uh, it is not available. It is not available online. So someone is going to have to go. Uh, on the final slide, you'll be able to see Kelsey's email if they would like that. I, I, I'm assuming you can get that by emailing you, Kelsey. Or, okay, cool. Yeah. So Kelsey's email address will be revealed. Actually, Josh, you can put it on the chat. Um, awesome. So balancing different directions. So who, who's pulling you in different areas? Obviously, the sales team are like, Kelsey, come and help me with my sales force my sales yeah. report yeah so i think like i mean obviously just even in a sales organization when it's 
uh, big, there's so many people who have different priorities mm -hmm. about what they think is the most important thing, right? Um, and so uh, just because somebody has what they think is a priority doesn't mean that it really is a priority of sales operations. And then obviously also like as sales operations, we work a lot with the other operational departments in our company. Um, so marketing ops has a lot of initiatives that they think are really important. CX operations has a lot of initiatives that they think are important. Our partner team has initiatives that they think are important. Mm. Uh, if it doesn't really fit into our top eight, um, then it doesn't necessarily, or, or, or into our sales operations playbook, then yeah. is it something that we should be working on? Sure. And um, if the, like, well, we keep coming back to the sentence that, right, but uh, all, all of those activities that you're prioritizing kind of, you're prioritizing them against that mission statement that we went through earlier, right? Absolutely. Got it. And is that like the, uh, is that the core of the playbook? Yep. Great. Makes sense. Yep. God, learning so much. Um, commander's intent. Another question from Dave. Who handles the contracts and the follow-up? The contracts and the follow-up? Yeah. Uh, so that would be Dildesk. Um, okay, cool. So he does all that. Got it. Um, and are they part of the sales team? No, they're not. They're part of finance, actually. Got it. Cool. Okay. Um, okay, here's a super interesting question. Do you have, is there like one single metric that you think is best to assess uh, a sales team or a sales problem? Um, I don't think uh, there's one single metric that you can use to judge all sales users by. Um, I think ultimately attainment is the most important thing. Mm. Uh, but I think there are a lot of factors that go into that. Um, I don't think if a rep has a bad quarter, uh, it means they're a bad sales rep. It just might mean that we have an opportunity to coach and look into other data like velocity, win rate, average sales price, pipeline metrics, you know, different things like that to determine, uh, uh, to help coach them uh, to be more successful. But ultimately, if they aren't hitting the number that, Okay. If they aren't hitting the number, they're not fulfilling their responsibility as a sales rep. So that's like the headline. Uh, it, yeah. If this isn't going well, you can then dive into other data points. Yeah, absolutely. Potentially coach. And well, what I'm really getting from almost every interview we do is how like data driven sales operations is. Like you're not necessarily, well, you're, you're going to listen to a salesperson's opinion, but actually you're then going to go and look at all of the data behind that action. Yep, absolutely. And then use that to coach. Cool. Um, Awesome. Uh, final question is about who taught you what you know. Um, and is there one kind of sales of thought leader that you look up to or learn from? So uh, the person I've learned the most from is my current boss and who's been my boss actually the entire time at Workfront, mm. Curtis Holman. Um, he has definitely been my mentor. Um, when I talked about my journey above of like being a Salesforce admin and then like learning different areas along with sales ops, he's been my mentor uh, the entire time and has really helped me learn what a best in class sales operation should be doing. Um, and we've kind of both been able to make that journey together as well um, as I've kind of gotten up a little bit. Sure. More. And uh, what if his role in the business? So what was that? What if his role in the business? Oh, he is the uh, director of sales operations. So, yeah. roll up to him. And so he, him. he's been in the game for a while. Yes. Uh huh. He's probably been in sales operations for ten years. Wow. So. Nice. Um, okay, Josh, how are we doing? Any more questions on either channel? Cool. Okay, we have one more from Facebook. Um, do you have so for the onboarding process? Do you use any software or technology to more efficiently onboard new sales people? Do you use any technology to more efficiently onboard them? Is that what you're asking? Yeah. Um, so I don't actually work a lot with the onboarding process of the sales reps. That's mm -hmm. more of uh, sales enablement. Okay. And I know that they have uh, a, uh, I think it's called Bridge. Um, I don't actually know. I think that's what I think that's what the tool is called. Yeah. To just like the different classes or areas that a sales rep needs to 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 do, to oh. like certify or whatever, or do things like that. So they've built that all out. Um, but that's our sales enablement team that does that. Well, uh, we're going to link every 
every piece of uh, software that you've mentioned in the notes and the show notes for this. Um, awesome. Well, that was super interesting to gain. Like, a, like you've clearly thought a lot about what sales up here. It's a playbook. I really like that sentence. We're going to tweet that out later. Um, that's okay. super interesting to have somebody who has a nephew come from a sales background and is taking a very analytical and I would say thoughtful approach to sales operation. Um, any more questions before we go? That we're good. Awesome. Well, Kelsey, thank you so much for giving up your time. Yeah, absolutely. It's been a great um, conversation. And if if anybody's listening on the podcast, uh, Kelsey's email is Kelsey Hanson, so C E L R I H A N S E N at, at workfront.com. Um, you can now see it on the slides if you're watching along. Um, so if you would like to know anything more about the Sales Operations Playbook uh, or Workfront, uh, you can drop Kelsey an email. And as always, if you'd like to learn anything more about Hector, you can drop Henry, who's not here today, an email at, I should know Henry's email address, but Henry Peacock at Hefter.com. Kelsey, thank you much for, so much for joining us. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for having me.